Hi every one, everyone, Scrap and Lucy here, playing with scraps as usual. But I just wanted to show you what what I'm doing, what I'm up to on this here panel, whatever it is I'm doing. Well, I finished couching the tree. That's the whole tree, the tree trunk, the tree trunk, and then all the tree. I um, have that all couched on. It kind of goes over these trees up here. And what I, I didn't mean to do this wrinkly. See how this blue fabric is like all kind of gathered up? Well, that's only because I pulled the threads too tight when I was... When you're couching, you really need to put... Just pick up a small amount of the fabric what you're couching to. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of gatherings. Well, here I kind of was trying to go too quickly and I made my stitches too big, which caused my fabric to gather up together, to bunch up together. But I like it. I like how that turned out. So that's like, oh, what's his name would say it was a happy mistake. Or what's his name? Bob Ross. It was like a happy mistake. So I like the way. Now, it didn't, it didn't, here it didn't do that because I was going through more fabric. And this one too, I was going through more fabric. Here it was a lighter weight fabric on this blue. So it did do that and it just kind of bunched it up. But I like that. So I'm glad that that happened. So I got that all the way up. I got that all the way put on. And then I used some of this here kind of, um, it's like a long eyelash trim yarn, like a, like a, the yarn that you use with your regular yarn when you're knitting or crocheting. It's accent yarn. I use that, and I put just, and I couched it. I couched it. Then I had to pull on it to get those threads pulled out so it looks like grasses and stuff. I like that. I just think that is so, so nice. And, um... Today, while I was doing this, I was watching a lot of um, videos on different textile art to see what what other people do, too. And I don't see anybody doing it like this, so maybe I'm doing it all wrong. But I, I think that what you do is, is you just do whatever. It doesn't, you know, if you're just putting textiles together... You don't have to follow in. This is no direction. This is just little pieces I've done. I've got the um, slashing up here. There's slashing down here. Applique on this one. Couching right there. Nothing on this except that. And here I put that um, shiny see-through kind of fabric over these pieces. And I couched on these little things. I just couched on these different yarns. Couched this on. Then at the bottom, I just went with blue. I kind of was thinking like water. And so, although this is blue and green, I have this little tiny piece of purple. And I just love that. It's got like lavender flowers in it. And then I made that little yo-yo out of it. And I just said, that's got to be in there. I just want that lavender in there because it's just so pretty. And so, and then I took some of this yarn. This is that scrubby yarn, but I love the color. So I took that and I just kind of wrapped it around on there a bit. And then I covered the whole thing with this whole bottom half with um, this tool. And then I took the sewing machine and I zigzagged sewing along the edges of these um different color of blues in this green and um and i then zigzagged over also over where the um the yarn is well this is not anywhere near finished i think at the bottom i've got somewhere i've got some like beaded ribbon it's ribbon but it's got like a tassel some beads i think i want to put that on the bottom and I want something still to be on the edge. But I haven't decided yet what 
I want to put on the edge. I don't want to put any like lace on the edge because this is like not a lace thing. And so, but I'm going to be trying to figure what I think I want to put on the edges. But I do know for sure, like I've said before, I do want me some butterflies. I do want me some butterflies on this. And I'm just going to put, is this needle going to fit through that butterfly hole? No, it's not. Dang it, dang it, dang it. It's not going to fit through that butterfly hole. Okay, so then back to the drawing board. Well, back to the pin cushion. Let's see if I can find... Okay, this one here will, but I will not be able to get that thread. I won't get this thread through it. What about this needle? Let's check this one. Oh, that'll go through. It just barely goes through. Will it go through with the thread on it? And it's kind of got a blunt end on it. It's not real sharp. Now I'm going to try it, though. If I can get it threaded. Get it threaded. I didn't get to go out and visit the chickens today, which makes me sad. But I kind of, well, what I, like I told y'all yesterday, I'm trying to be a little bit better taking care of my health, you know, by exercising, going out a little bit, going outside a little bit, and eating right well. I kind of eaten too right, and so my sugar just dropped like, it, yeah, it got, yeah, it just really dropped, so, and well, if you're diabetic, you know what happens when your sugar drops, and then it's kind of rough getting it back on track again. Now, and it just about as rough as it is trying to get this thread and this needle. So, I'm going to not, well, I want this thread, though. I want this thread in here. Because I want to tie the buttons on. I don't want to sew them on like I'm sewing a button on a shirt. If I had three hands... Oh, I think I got it. I think I did get it. Well, maybe I didn't. No, darn it. I got one half of the thread. Hang on, y'all. I think I can do this. Just a minute. Let me... Oh, gosh, Lizzie. Lizzie! I'm telling you, sometimes I just get on my own nerves. Just get on my own nerves. Since my children have all grown up and moved away... They're not getting on my nerves, but then I get on my own nerves. Um, I got it. I'm no longer on my own nerve. My nerve is now fine. All right. Now, now let's get a button on here. Let us just get a button going on this. Let's just get a button on. Once I get one button on, I'll be happy because then, well, yeah, it's kind of hard getting through um, like a bunch of layers of fabric. Man, this thumb. Tell me, you old age, it's a trick. Just a minute, we're getting this. I'm gonna put my gloves on. Um, yeah, I didn't get to go see my chickens today, so tomorrow I told Papa we're gonna go early in the morning to go out to the chicken coop and spend time with the chickens. Jeffrey will be here tomorrow, and um. Hopefully when he's here, my eating schedule will be okay because usually when he's here, we kind of go crazy eating. Because you got to, you got you know, a 14-year-old boy has got a hollow leg. You know, you might not know that, but it's true. If you're a 14-year-old boy, you got a hollow leg. That child eats. 
he can put away some groceries, I'm telling you. So, and then, so, I like to see kids eat. I think kids need to eat. So, let me see. That one's just like that one. Oh, I'll put this one. Let's put this one right here. Oh, now i got to go through the... I like to go from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, and so I can just tie it in a knot. I like the looks of having it tied in a knot. I, um, I want, I want to ask, oh, there, wait, wait, how come I can't do something and talk at the same time, think, uh, seriousness, though, really, I want to ask who, uh, anybody who prayers, sends prayers, or good wishes and whatever, my friend Samantha, she um, lives just north of me, just a short short while, and she's come down and um, she crafts with me. But she's had her little dog Sandor for years, and I don't know if you all understand, but once you raise your children and you get rid of your kid, well, you don't get rid of your kids, but they kind of move out, and then you have a pet. It's like that pet turns into like your best friend ever. Well, her little Sandor had medical issues, and I'm telling you, they had that dog back and forth to the vet. She's a nurse, and so she nursed her dog and nursed her dog and tried to get that little dog back into good shape. But the, I don't remember what she said was the actual... It was like a cancerous tumor, but, and then that was surgically taken care of and was in the healing process, but it wasn't healing. And, and the dog was getting up in age anyway. And so as much as it broke her heart, it broke her heart, but she knew it was best for her little dog. She had to let her little dog go and, Gosh, I got goosebumps just telling you. But I feel so bad for her right now because her heart is so broken. I mean, we are blessed that we can make these decisions for our pets. And, um, we, you know, we are blessed in that way. But it still doesn't make it, like, any easier. And so I just... We've chatted a little bit on the message today, but she's just, she's, I can tell by her short messages because I know she usually has long messages, you know, but by her short messages, I know her heart is just absolutely broken. She loved that little dog. I mean, the dog had diabetes, and so she was constantly checking her his sugar and checking his, you know, giving him his insulin and taking care of, taking care of him and then bandaging him after the surgeries. And I mean, he's had more than one surgery, bless his heart. Um, so, but I already sent messages up to my dogs that are already went over Rainbow Bridge to be looking for Sandor and give her some love. And... Yep, and I believe in that too, so so I just want to, her name is Samantha. So, look there, I've got four butterflies so far, and aren't they pretty? But I want to do, I want to also get like, I think I have some flower butterflies, no flower butterflies, flower buttons. I think I do. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look through my buttons because I think Ray sent me some. And so I have to look, see if I can find them. I'm sure she sent me some. And so I'm going to find them in it because I want to put some, some flowers, but I want to 
since I'm doing like the button thing, I want to use buttons. But I think, look how pretty that looks up right there on that piece. And up at this top part, up at this top part up here, I think what I, I want to do is I've got some beads that are like, um, they're like clear beads like, and I think by putting them in here and putting them like down in the crevices where it's been slashed so that they peek through, I think it'll look like stars up here. And um, I think that's what I want to do here. But, and then I want to have a few butterflies. I just love my butterflies. And, um, and I think on my last, I don't have the order in yet, but my last order that I made with, with, um, Timu, I think I ordered some buttons that are birds. But I don't know if I'll put the birds on this, but I might. Because if the birds are the same size as, whoops, it goes here, as the but butterflies, then maybe the birds would look a little odd. I don't know. <laughs> Lord knows I don't want anything that looks odd. Oh, yes, I am the odd person. So I am the odd duck. But I like the, the buttons. And these are like wooden buttons. And, um, and they're like, what do they call that? Laser cut buttons. They're so pretty. And so, yeah, I need another order. I gotta quit that ordering stuff, but hey, what the heck. Sorry, children, there is no inheritance till you have a yard sale. In case they're watching. No, my kids won't get an inheritance from this part of the family. So look at there. I've got one, two, three, four, five but butterflies. But we can still go down here with butterflies. Ooh, a butterfly right there. And then I still can add... I think I've got some of that. It's like, well, it's not lace, but it's like, um, I think you buy it in the lace department. It's like a little string of leaves. They're kind of like a fabric leaf. I, I don't know if I'll put that on here or not, but um, I could just take a look-see and see what it would look like on there. But I might not need leaves. I might have think... If I try to put leaves on it, I think no, I don't. I don't think I will. I, you know, what I should have done, which I still can do, is if I on on this tree, if I had a branch that come out like this way, I could still do that. I could still add a branch to come straight out this way. And then I could add a swing. Put the branch out this way and add a swing. Just with to put two pieces of twine down and then the little swing here. Maybe put flower. My, you know, my image of heaven in my head is that um, when you get to heaven, there's going to be like a big flower garden and there's going to be a swing. And the ropes of the swing is going to go up so far you can't see them, but the swing ropes are gonna be made by flowers, like a daisy chain, just all kind of flowers. And we'll be able to swing in that swing with them daisy chain. I. Ever since I was a little girl, that's what I thought of heaven to be, is when I get to heaven, there's going to be a swing, and I'm going to be able to swing in that garden. That's just been in my head. I could put that. In fact, I think I will. I think, see, because all I'll have to do is add some more of this 
See, when, you, when you're doing something like this, any kind of fiber arts, you don't have to have your whole plan ahead of time. You can just work on it as you go. Just plan as you go. Just wh wherever your heart brings you. And so, but I can take some of this then and make another branch just coming out and have it go like straight across like this. Like this. So the branch will go out like that. And then from here, I can put the swing. I think I will do that. I believe I will do that because then this will be a little piece of heaven right here. This does look like maybe it's heaven. This could be heaven. But see, down here is where I want to... If I can find my button, flower buttons, if not, I'll just go look on Timu. But, um... Then I'm going to put some, I'm going to get some flowers growing down here. I'll couch the stems with yarn, and I will um, put the flower buttons for the flower. And if I just put like three or five, I always go with an odd number. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, I need another butterfly. But anyhow, if I, um, yeah, I need another. No, that's where my branch is going to go, so I can't put another butterfly right there. But, yes. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a swing. And, um, but, yeah, I will check and see if Timu has little, I'm sure they do, because when you put in buttons, oh, my gosh, it, and I just love buttons. And so... I'll seek, and they're not much money. That's what's awesome about it. You know, most of us can't afford to even go shopping, even at the Walmart, what they charge for sewing supplies and buttons and things. But I'm just happy that that Timu came about, or that I learned about it. It may have been around. Now i got an odd number of butterflies. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're good. And so anyway, but I want to get some flowers in here. And um, and then here at the bottom, not real sure yet how, what will go down here. You know what? Maybe dragonflies. If I add dragonflies to this too, because dragonflies like the water. And a lot of times dragonflies will just fly over the water. And who knows? Maybe I can find a fish button. Put some fish right down here. I could maybe do that. I don't know yet what I'm going to do on the edge, but I know something has to happen on the edge. And I don't know if I just want a binding on the edge, if that would be... You know, I wonder if I was to use burlap. If I was to use burlap and almost make a frame around the whole thing with burlap, then that would be more like nature, wouldn't it? I think so. Gosh, if I had a couple little ladybugs. Oh my gosh, I gotta go shopping at Team. You know, I gotta pay my taxes this month. Elizabeth, you gotta pay your taxes first. The only thing, two things you gotta do in life is you gotta pay your taxes and then you gotta die. Anything else is kind of up in the air. So. Every three months, and darn, that darn tax collector sends me nice mail every three months. But it's better than when I was paying it at the end of the year, because it was every at the end of every year I paid. But now that they break it up into, and my gosh, the taxes, our property wasn't worth that much when we first bought it, and our taxes were like, I, it, it, our taxes were probably less than fifty dollars a year. They were cheap. Not anymore. We've been here 50 years. Not anymore. Hardly cheap. But anyway, we pay them. We pay them. I always have the money. I always get it, conjure it up from somewhere. And sell my soul on the street. No, I don't do that. <gasps> but anyhow, yeah. So that's where I am at the, with this now. I just wanted to show you. And I think this turned out really good. The bottom. I love the bottom piece. I think that the colors turned out perfect. And um, 
and I really like it. Oh, and then somebody on one of the comments underneath the second video I think I put up, um, somebody said, what would that be neat if you had one of these, like this size, but put the four seasons? So, and I thought, wow, would that be awesome if you did do the four seasons? And so, like, if if I had my 10 by 10s, because I like to work on 10 by 10 squares. So if I did a 10 by 10 of winter, spring, summer, fall, or does it go spring? Maybe, which is the first season? Spring? I don't think there is any first. But if you put spring and then summer and then fall and then winter. I think I want to do that. That was an idea that somebody, I love the comments you all give me because my gosh, I get so many really neat ideas. But I do think I want to do one. And if I do a 10 by 10 square of each, each season, but then put them together, like see, just put them together to where they blend, you know, so it doesn't look like it's a quilt or nothing but that they blend like see here this tree would be more like fall but it it start it takes up this much of the of the um this much of the whole thing i mean it's like half of it or more but so if i was to do like spring summer winter no spring summer fall and winter if i had a fall tree down here in the fall spot but the tree went up into the summer part it would like blend it all together then if i had summer things that went into the spring things i i really want to do that i'm really going to set my mind to it and then winter stuff down here if i have the winter stuff at the bottom and i got a, a snowman on my winter i mean if i do the whole 10 by 10 in a winter background and then if i couched or um, applicate a snowman but his head was actually on the um fall piece it kind of pull it together do you get what i'm saying i'm thinking out loud right now it's just <laughs> I just I just love the idea. I just loved the idea. So whoever it was, I'll have to look again at the um, comments and see who it was that that um, that told me about that, that suggested that awesome suggestion. Because that is awesome suggestion. And so, okay, now I'm going to read. And um, this time I'm going to read from the chicken soup for the golden soul. Now, we all have, well, I don't know. I just assume if I'm old, everybody's old. And so, let me see. Oh, this is just a two-pager. This is what I over, it's on overcoming, okay? A plan for you. Oh, that is so cute. The family circus, it says, and say hi to our grandfather who art in heaven. Oh, God, that's so cute. Okay, now, here we go. Let me see. Let me get me a page, page marker here. Page marker. A marker for a page. Oh, here, this will work. Okay. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to... Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. That's in Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, the telephone rang. The familiar voice on the other end belonged to a close friend from California. Her voice caught with a little sob, and then I heard, my wonderful husband has just died. My mind went back many years to when my husband, Norman, was pastor of the Mar Marble College Church on Fifth Avenue in New York City, a striking gentleman started coming to the Sunday school, Sunday morning service, accompanied by his mother. They sat about eight or ten rows from the back. He visited several churches on Fifth Avenue, but left each one after a few Sundays. He kept attending our worship service, and later he was selected to become an elder. 
He was considered one of the most brilliant attorneys in New York City, and he was single. Now, the rest of the story. Norman and I were taking a tour group of about 1,200 people to Hawaii. We persuaded the attorney to go with us. The trip was a wonderful experience. One evening in the Seaside Hotel in Hawaii, I was planning the seating arrangements for the dinner table Norman and I would host. I had invited a good friend from San Francisco to be seated at our table. I asked myself, what gentleman could I select to put next to this beautiful woman? The thought of our attorney came back to mind, for I felt he would be a good choice. You can probably guess what happened. They fell for each other. That evening in Hawaii was a divine appointment. They were married. He moved to California, and for 15 years they enjoyed a wonderful life together. She was the one calling to inform me of his death. I remember telling my dear distraught friend that I tell other friends, what I tell other friends when they lose a spouse, God has a plan for you. And when you two, when God had a plan for you when you two met and has a plan for you now, a happy time of her life had come to a close. She had needed to believe that her future was still full of promise. Through all the changes in our lives, I said to her, we all need to be reminded that God has a plan for us. I believe this because I have seen it to be true in so many of in so many people. At that at the time I spoke to my friend from a second hand experience, but now I can speak from a first first hand experience because Norman died after more than six decades of our being married. I treasure the past, but I enjoy the present too. I have begun to venture into new areas of speaking and writing that I never took time for when Norman was alive, but now is a good time as ever for stretching my capabilities. When one of my friends or acquaintances loses a spouse and asks for my advice, I say, I make it a point to enjoy new unfolding plans for my life. If this formula works for me, it can work for you. And this was written by Ruth Stafford Stanford Peel. Now, I wondered about that if I didn't read if that um, if that was her. Um, Norman Vincent Peel. This must have been the the wife of of Norman Vincent Peel. And so, but yes, when one door closes. Another door opens, and it's real hard to say that to somebody right away when they've lost a loved one like that. It's kind of hard to say that because the person left behind doesn't really want to think of any more open doors or anything like that. Um, but I know firsthand. I lost a husband, and it was only about a year after I lost my husband that I had Papa. And at first I felt like I was being, at first I felt like I was being, um, like I was being not faithful to Ernie, to my husband. But then I felt like, but I really like this guy. I just love talking to Richard. Just him and I could talk for hours. But then I, when we'd part for the day, I would feel like, I would feel like, um, no, this isn't right. I'm not allowed to feel this way. And so, and of course you don't feel that. Well, for, for my husband too, he was sick for so long before he passed away, and he was sick with early onset Alzheimer's disease, and so his last two years of life, he was completely already gone. He was alive, and that was it. Other than that, he was really, he was like an infant, and so, um, and I took care of him, and I loved every minute taking care of him, and um, I missed the man I married, the person he was when I married him. But so, and they do call Alzheimer's disease the long goodbye. In fact, there's a book that I had at the 
the time that was it's called the long goodbye and um so you know even though you know he my ernie died in january and by may of the following year um i already had met richard my husband now and so but this is true you know when one door opens when one door closes, and it doesn't mean like you have to be with another husband or something. If you lose your husband, your spouse, you don't have to go run out and find another one and replace that one. No, that's not it. But there's other doors, other doors that can be, you know, that can be open. Maybe you want to start writing a book or maybe you want to um, start studying nature. I don't know doing crafts I don't know doing art <laughs> but anyhow well there I go on my soapbox again but you know these it is hard to overcome lo losing a loved one and um, and I sort of you know I've been talking to my granddaughter the last couple of days as much as I can trying to you know because like I told you she she miscarried and even though she was only 11 weeks pregnant, that was a child. And she just married, miscarried just a couple of days ago. And man, that hurts. She is so broken up. And, um, and it, it's hard to say the right things because I don't know. I, I don't know the right things to say. All I know is I say things. I just, I just love her so much. But anyhow... Okay, I'm going to continue. That earache just started giving me another little problem there. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so anyhow, yes. So that's the update on my little wall hanging here. If you got any ideas, I, I do think my burlap idea, though, on the edge of this, I think I may do a burlap, burlap edging. The little beads, the blue beads at the bottom, like a fringe, a beaded fringe, and the burlap on the edges, and the top probably, to finish, to finish it up. And I'm going to be adding more stuff, although it's, I think it's beautiful just like it is. I can't show you the whole thing because it's like long, but I am going to get started on a, on a Four Seasons. I am definitely going to do a Four Seasons. That is such a good idea. And so I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. Keep you healthy. Keep you happy. Keep you humble. Keep you safe and secure. And I will see you on the next video. God bless you all.